guys, welcome. My name is Dana and this is the Pink Peony Oracle. Today I'm going to be doing a reading for Aquarius. You do not have to be an Aquarius. You can be any sign. If the title of this video called to you and resonates for you, then there's probably something in it for you. Um, this is a timeless reading, so whenever you get here, it should be meant for you at that time. And please take what resonates and just leave what doesn't. This should just confirm things that you're already working through and experiencing right now. Um, so, I've got your channeled messages, Aquarius. Well, it's more of like visuals. Um, so, the first thing... The first thing I saw was um i think it's called like a protractor and a compass um not like the compass to direct you but you know like uh when you're working out mathematical angles and equations um and mapping things you get that like looks like a fork and you can like put your pencil in it and you can draw like a circle and you can also measure angles and like space out things and then the protractors like that round thing that tells you the degree anyway it feels like sorry i've suddenly got like a hair or something in my mouth um anyway it feels like you're trying to solve a problem or uh quantify a situation and really work it out and like practically very uh analytically trying to solve this problem using like practical tools and things it's, it seems all very like left side brain um like analytical problem solving i don't know what your problem is but it, it you're re it feels like you're it even feels like you could just have like this broad idea and you're really trying to practically decipher it and break it down and work out like this equation and you're it just feels like a highly focused mind but you're it, it it's like there's so much to understand and break down and and i was like okay let's just that's just okay so that was the visual that i got and that was the like understanding that i got that came with it and then after that, I was like, okay, is there anything else? And I saw a cupcake and I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not too sure what that means. I got the idea of like something sweet. Um, <clears throat> and I also got the thought, cause I'm a baker. I have a bakery. That's why it's quite difficult for me to like consistently put out videos cause I've, Two other businesses that I'm running and I'm very hands-on and um, basically like it's like chemistry baking you usually have to be pretty exact and there's an exact process on how you do it and you know and this is how it comes about and the end result is sweet and delicious and great so it feels like maybe you're trying to you know add some sweetness to your life solve this problem to i don't know bring about some sort of yumminess okay but then i didn't this is just i'm just telling you this now because i sort of dismissed the cupcake idea and i was like because i'm only just working out this cupcake theory now but um i asked for something that i'd be able to understand more clearly all I saw was a maple tree and then like a maple leaf, like a maple leaf in front of me. It was very, I mean, they're very easy to identify. And I was like, okay, let me go. And, um, oh, and then, so I just decided like, I wasn't quite discerning what the cupcake and the maple leaf was about. So I just asked for anything else. And then I heard like beginner's mind. Um, and it, I wrote down beginner's mind and approaching situations with like an, a sense of innocence and curiosity. So 
So I did when I came out of my meditation, I obviously Googled what this like symbolism of a maple tree is. And it symbolizes balance, offering, practical magic, generosity, intelligence. And then also that, that like the really cool thing about maple trees that I just learned is that they are um, adaptable to different climates and environments and um, they they can still produce their syrup and that sweetness no matter the situation or like the different soils the climate any of that stuff like they can still they're they're adaptable and they can still produce what they need to produce so i thought that was very interesting and i'm um, okay so I've already pulled your cards. I'm using my Shaman's Dream Oracle, the Mystical Shaman Oracle. And then at the end, I think I'm going to pull a guidance card from either my Angels and Ancestors Oracle or my Angel Guide Cards, Oracle Cards. Okay, so. Okay, so the first card you got, which I was really not surprised, <laughs> was from, this is the mystical not the shaman's dream oracle you got the mindful card okay i mean there's a lot going on in this card i'm just gonna like show you the amount of things going on in this card there is just oh my word there's a cake there's a cake i see as well cupcake okay you see this is what i mean i feel like you have there's like a bright idea or there's something you're trying to break down or understand or decipher and you're using very practical, logical thinking mind to do it. And that's very Aquarian of you, actually. I did all of this um, meditation before I actually knew who I was going to be doing the reading for. So realizing now that you're an Aquarian, I'm not surprised that your logical brain mind activity is very much at the forefront of this reading so um on the card it's mindful okay it's not like mindful it's your mind is full obviously of many things and um i you know i haven't uh, worked with this deck very much it's very new um, but the, the understanding that I'm getting is, okay, so I'm not, I don't know if you see here, but the being that's mind is full of things looks very, um, I'm getting the, like an elemental telluric energy from it that, and then I was being drawn back to when I wrote down like approaching situations with like curiosity and innocence. It seems like. It seems like you're being too practical. You're being too logical. You're be you're you're going about this um, equation solving in the wrong way. You you need to obviously put on this like beginner's mind. And I also I'm getting the idea of um, allowing allowing what once like allowing the solution to come to you, if that makes any sense. Um, it's like not trying so hard and just more like sort of what I do when I go into meditation and visualize. I just, I like, I literally imagine like a clear board in front of me and then I allow whatever wants to come through to be like placed on the board, like a big whiteboard's put in front of me and then I'll see like an object or a word and then I can sort of like decipher what's going on. So, and the other thing, okay. The other thing that's coming through, and this is very interesting, my mom is an Aquarius and she's a hypnotherapist, so obviously she loves the mind and everything like that. And we were discussing how um, solutions to problems are, well, I was, I was discussing with her and she was just really affirming that I was on the right track. Um, I think our solutions come to us easier when we can access both parts of our brain when we use our creative side and our analytical side and allow our mind to just sort of merge and complete the solution 
on its own. We have Zeus here, by the way. And um, I think that's something you need to do as well. Like being, being willing to approach the situation, approach your problem, approach whatever it is, this idea, whatever this experience is, be willing to approach it and allow solution to come to you through whatever way your mind wishes it to come through don't it feels like don't be so stuck in expecting it to come through in one specific way um and uh i'm aware like so many things are coming through i can't i can't give i can't tell you everything it's too much um but basically i think it's a, like allowing yourself like Allowing yourself to be teachable in this moment, you know, allowing yourself to learn and experience in a different way that you're used to experiencing or working things out. Um, are you comfortable, bro? Sorry about that. So, <clears throat> uh, one thing that I think might benefit you is, you know, I mean, in the spiritual community, we always say meditate and all of that. And I do think it's... It helps, but there's something about really trying to access both parts of your brain. And um, a game that I played with my mom as well to kind of problem solve is, um, well, okay, the, explaining the game will be too long, but my mom broke it down for me. And there's, bah, okay, this is a good example. Sorry, there's so many things coming through. If you've ever looked at a labyrinth, there's something about when you walk through a labyrinth, okay, it twists and it turns and it goes this way and that way and left and right and you're constantly having to move in different directions. And um, there's a concept about um, when walking through a labyrinth, if you can think and focus and really focus your mind on the problem of what it is you're trying to solve, um, as you are physically with your physical body moving left and right it's activating the left and the right side of your brain and it's a lot I don't know the terms if my mom was here I would get her to sit in and tell us um these uh, she knows it, all these things but anyway basically getting both sides of your brain to activate at the same time and you literally do this by physically moving your body like left and right so each turn you take your body um, and your mind sync up and your left and your right side start working together. And while you're walking through this labyrinth, going left and right and left and right, your brain starts syncing up and you will come to a solution. Ideas will come to your mind. And it's about paying attention to these ideas that are coming through. Because if you look in this card, I'm also noticing, see there's a key over here. And then there's the hole over here. And it's like your mind has the answer to the solution. You don't need to be doing all this like technical, practical, analytical problem solving. You just sort of need to get your mind to sync up. Now, meditation does this, but there's like practical ways to do this as well. Um, I know, I think one of the reasons why hypnotherapists back in the day used to use a like a, what are they called? Those, you know, those like watches, they would like swing them side to side and you'd have to follow it side to side. It's because what it does is it starts like activating these like both parts of your brain, allowing your brain to really sync up and really harness the fullness, the fullness of your mind. Okay. So now that we've broken that down, um, I'm going to get into the strength of yours in this situation, what your heart and soul would like you to know, and then the challenge. So we can help, you know, focus on that and figure it out. Now, um, like I said, I feel like the answer is completely within you. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say that. Okay. <clears throat> So, <laughs> and I just saw um, what I'd written down, practical magic. 
<laughs> so, okay, um, there is so much going on, guys. I'm so flip and tapped into your energy. I'm like constantly having to discard like these overwhelming flooding thoughts in my mind. Um, <laughs> all very interesting, but just too much to break down in this little video. So the strength of yours that you have right now, you've got the rattle. Okay. And to me, this feels like, um, answering the call. Like if you, like you heard the bells going off, you heard the sirens in your mind letting you know that like this is the time to like bring forth a, like a practical um solution and i'm getting the idea that this is okay i don't know how this like relates but it i'm getting the idea that this uh perhaps the okay i'm getting the idea that you heard the call to like to start getting the ball rolling on this situation and um, that's why you started this whole like analytical breakdown of whatever's occurring. And it's something, it has to do, I feel like it has to do with your emotional body. Like coming into a state of like emotional balance. Um, and also, I'm hearing psychic awareness. Now take what resonates. If that doesn't resonate for you. So... Perhaps you're trying to grow your intuitive abilities, your psychic awareness, um, uh, enhance your emotional balance and really come into that like sweet spot because I'm thinking, I'm like really thinking about this maple tree now and how like, like balance is a part of it, this practical magic understanding, like intelligence, you know, all these like there's, it's like, there is just too much going on in your mind, guys. You need to just, like, bring it down to, like, simplify it. Don't, you're expanding on it too much is what it feels like. And there's a need to just bring it back down. And I'm feeling like, bring it back to the heart. Because there's something about, like, an emotional awareness within the situation that will assist you here. Yeah, it's part of the strength. Um, but I'm not sure if you're quite aware of this. I hope this is making sense. I feel like because your mind is so busy, I'm all over the show. Okay. But it does it does feel like the, this main, like the strength with this rattle card coming through is like you heard the call you knew it was time like you knew that this was the moment that this like this bright idea came and you knew you needed to run with it that's what that feels like um and maybe this this is like about your spiritual psychic intuitive growth because that's kind of i don't know where it's coming from but it's coming through um now what your heart wants you to know your soul your deeper Deeper self over soul. This dog is just full of beans. Okay, so this is what I want you to know. You got the blade. Now, <clears throat> what I'm, okay, well, so what I'm actually hearing with this blade, like the idea that's coming through to me is that, like I said, you need to just simplify it all. I feel like You've got your mind in this massive knot of trying to problem solve. Like I'm seeing it all tangled up. There's just so much. There's just so much going on. And you need to just like use the blade to cut that shit. Like cut that tangled mess. You know like when you when you were young. Okay, if you're a girl you'll probably relate. And you got like such a big knot in your hair. And your mom couldn't get it out. And you couldn't get it out. The only way to get this freaking knot out your hair was to actually just cut it. It feels like that. Um, <laughs> so well, that's the concept that I'm getting. Because I feel like it's tying you up so much that it's frustrating you. It also feels like it's affecting you emotionally. Like I said, there's this weird um, emotional aspect to this. But it feels like it's an undercurrent. Like it's not at the surface of the situation. The surface of the situation is you analytically trying to solve 
this thing. So, um, yeah, it's like, it's very mental. This, this is like needing to cut this mental knot out, simplify it all. Like I said, when I go into meditation, I like imagine myself wiping the board clean. Okay. Clean whiteboard in front of me. Image, solution, idea comes, pops up. I take it. As I need the next one, I literally imagine myself wiping the board clear. And then I see what comes next. And I make notes. And I write it down. Just like as you're moving through the labyrinth, going left and right, activating both sides of your brain. When the idea comes, it's important to like take note of it. Because your mind, especially if your mind is so busy and active with all these things going on, how are you ever going to hear the solution, the pro like what's coming through from you? Especially if you're used to using your analytical mind, perhaps a creative solution is coming through for you and you're just, it's, you're not going to pick it up because you're just so like all over the show. So finally, your challenge, which now makes sense that we've broken this message down. You got the standstill card. You got the standstill card and um, you know what, <laughs> you know what I'm hearing. So I'm okay. Cause in my head, I just saw, don't ask me. I just saw the Knight of Cups. Okay. So clearly, like I said, you need to like still the mind. You need to clear the whiteboard. You need to detangle your mind from everything that you're trying to work out right now. And Come into a state of like balance. Again, this like maple tree being about balance. Like come into a state of balance. Um, allow. And remember in the beginning, I'm pretty sure I said I, got, I get the feeling of like needing to allow the answer to come to you. You don't need to be doing so much. You just need to allow it to come to you because I've, it's already yours. Like, like I said, it's in your mind. You already have the solution to this problem and I just saw 2222 two, two, two on the clock I did yes so <clears throat> this is what this is about your challenge is actually like stilling the waters calming the mind detangling the mess like this this is this seems this is obviously your challenge and the solution to this challenge is meditating doing doing something to like wipe the board clean like i said it doesn't have to be this massive thing it doesn't have to be a full-on meditation and all of that like i literally just use visualization when i'm doing my um like when i'm coming into these sorts of things i'll do like a meditation but afterwards i use visualization to see what's like the message or an image or the word so it feels like just imagining this clear whiteboard in front of you the same whiteboard that you're trying to freaking work out this equation on clean it wipe it clean wipe it clean and allow the image to come to you like i said i'm seeing i'm seeing the knight of cups which is making me feel like if the message will come to you like it is on its way it is moving towards you it is it is this and what is the knight of cups like the messenger of love like i said there's this like underlying this emotional aspect like an emotional solution also this like creative solution in the more spiritual intuitive realm so i'm not sure what it is that you're trying to work out guys but if this applies, you know, take it how it applies to you. But it feels like a messenger, a moving thing that is coming towards you to give you the answer, to give you the solution to this problem. Okay, so that is me breaking down what it is that I have experienced for you. Um, and yeah, oh, and the other thing, that was the other thing that uh, when I first saw this card, I heard, <clears throat> and I heard 
like I said, heard, like I heard being like allowing yourself to be teachable, allowing yourself to um, experience solutions in a different way. But then I also heard being a witness. So what does a witness do? It doesn't necessarily participate in the activity. It sits and observes. Being an observer of your mind rather than a participant if that makes any sense, like allow it, remember, it's also, I'm getting the concept again of like, when you use both sides of your brains, you sync it up, you come into this balance, and when you're in that state, your mind, you just have to observe what comes through, I feel like I'm just giving a lesson of like, meditation and techniques and stuff, but anyway, that is, this is so, like witnessing seems to be important like using your eyes being an observer and like step out of the be and also i'm being called back to that like innocence and curiosity like that childlike mindset the what are a beginner's mind going in wiping the slate clean without trying to break the situation down being open and receptive that's the other like receptive allowing it to come to you now i'm just being very repetitive so i'll stop there i'll stop there okay so let's pull in a guidance card for you and i think i'm gonna use my angel guide card so what further guidance advice message of hope and love anything that your guides my guides source the universe, however you describe it, what messages do they have for you? Oh, and I just felt this like weird sense of like, like, like calmness come over me. Very interesting. Oh, I say calmness. I say this weird calmness just came over me. And on the bottom of the deck, you got ease and grace. Notice he's balancing, he's balancing, and there's like this, he's allowing a flow, he's allowing this like energy to flow through him, and his mental space is pretty active, like there's a, but he's allowing it to flow through him instead of, see it's all flowing, there's no knots, there's no like tangled mess or anything, he's remaining balanced. And allowing it to come. Okay, Leo, we have the cat with us, as you're all you're all familiar with. Okay, the two cards you got was learning experience. What did I say? I kept hearing be teachable. Allow yourself to learn this experience in a new way. Guys, spirit, we, you know, as humans, we're always ever evolving. Like we're always learning, we're always growing, we're always evolving. Or is coming into new understandings. Um, so this this is this is what this feels like. You, you, this this is meant to teach you something. Allow it to do so, so you can become illuminated, like and understand this whatever it is that you're trying to understand. And then the next one you got was trust the universe. Like again, the the universe is magical. And it'll often give us different tests to evolve us. And they're not always what we expect them to be. And sometimes only once we've completed the lesson do we understand the synchronicity and the magic and the divine orchestration that was there. So trust the process and allow yourself to experience this. Be a witness. Like... Be an observer and allow the experience to come to you, to fill you up, to work through you, you know? Don't, you don't need to be so active in this. You can just allow it is really what this feels like. So guys, I hope this message helped you in some way. Um, but that's it for me. So Aquarius, good luck. Have fun. Calm that active analytical mind of yours. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for sharing this space with me. I appreciate you all. I know I have a couple new newcomers. New newcomers? Yeah. Thanks to Rob and this whole 
community that I just absolutely love to be a part of. So thank you all so much. Until next time.